Hey guys, welcome back. Got another deck tech for you today. People have been asking for another one, and some of you asked about my Yerok deck. I've never um, done a deck tech video on this, but this is my um, second pimped out deck in addition to my Kalia of the Vast. So I just thought I'd show you this. Obviously, this is all with real cards. It's all um, foil and borderless and um, the best pimped out versions I can get. So I'm um, excited to share these cards with you. Now, um, Yerok, as a commander, um, has Death Touch Lifelink. We don't really care about those things. What we care about is his um, ongoing ability, which says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. Basically what this does, um, most obviously it triggers enter the battlefield abilities on creatures twice. Um, also it doubles your landfall triggers. And um, some other things too, even like cards that say when a creature enters the battlefield, draw a card. That is a triggered ability, so you'd get to draw two cards. So we'll just go through this and um, I'll point out some things. But yeah, that's the nice thing about Yerok is your deck is just pure value. Um, if, he ha if you have him down, it's double value. But even if you don't get him down or you can't keep him on the table, um, all your cards um, really are good at generating value on their own. So... So here's Yerok, the commander, a elemental horror. Um, you know, think he's looks like an Eldrazi, but I think because he was in the core set, they don't print him with the Eldrazi keyword or devoid or anything like that. But just a really cool, fun commander. Starting off with our mana base. So um, we do play um, all nine fetches that we can play. Um, we can't play the Arid Mesa since that's not in our colors, but everything else for the... Um, Enemy fetches, um, we do play the new Full Art Borderless from Modern Horizons. We've got Marsh Flats, Misty Rainforest, Scalding Tarn, Burdent Catacombs. Then for our uh, allied fetches, we play the original promo versions, Bloodstained Mire, Flooded Strand, Polluted Delta, Windswept Heath, and Wooded Foothills. Then for our color fixing, we do play our revised duels in Bayou, Tropical Island, and Underground Sea. Then for our Ravnica Shocklands, we do play the Zendikar Expedition version of Breeding Pool. Overgrown Tomb, and Watery Grave. Then we do have our, again, multiplayer lands that you want to play these in a multiplayer game, not in head-to-head. -head. We've got uh, Morphic Pool, Rejuvenating Springs, and Undergrowth Stadium. Then we do play our two Horizon lands. The third one is not available. Um, we've got Nurturing Peatland and Waterlogged Grove. Um, I like the Bajuka Bog in this deck. You can um, kill two people's graveyards with this because this is a, um, a permanent ability entering the battlefield triggering. So you do get to choose two opponents whose graveyards you're going to exile. Dryad Arbor, just like this card, like going green, sun, zenith for zero with it. And here's one of the amazing pieces in this deck, the Gaia's Cradle tournament promo. Uh, this just gets really out of hand when you get a lot of creatures down or an Avenger of Zendikar or something like that, and you just, um, just go for insane amounts of mana out of this one land. Then the new um, Urborg for green, we've got Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth. And we do have Cavern of Souls. We're usually going to name Elemental for this, again, just so that... Um, you can make sure that Yerok can't be countered. Um, there actually are surprisingly uh, several other elementals in this deck, not on, not on purpose, like I was going elemental tribal, but just um, happen to be a lot of the good cards are also elementals. So that's Cavern of Souls. Then we've got our obvious uh, Command Tower, Prismatic Vista for additional fetching, Zagoth Triome, which is just fantastic to fetch four, and then Field of the Dead. Again, guys, this Field of the Dead trigger um, 
when a land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 zombie. If you have seven or more lands, you get two zombies um, if you have Yarok down. And a couple of my favorite utility lands, just Ancient Tomb, Strip Mine, and Wasteland. And last but not least, we've got our basics, one of each, Island, Swamp, and Forest. Moving on to our creatures, we're going to start off with our blue creatures. We've got Spellseeker, and again guys, a lot of these are just going to be enter the battlefield creatures, but um, always think if you've got Yarok out, you're going to get double of what it says. So like this, you're going to get two instant or sorcery spells. Uh, Thassa is just a Conjurer's Closet, blink every turn type ability. Venser. Again, this is cool where you can, uh, if, if there's a spell on the stack, you can bounce the spell and bounce a permanent if you've got um, Yarok down, or you can always just bounce two permanents, but uh, great getting the double trigger, obviously. Uh, Mold Drifter, um, Evoke. The nice thing with Evoke cards is if you choose to um, just cast them for the Evoke ability and not pay the full cost, it still does double the trigger with Yarok, so... Um, for example, with Yarok down, you can just pay Evoke 2 and draw 4 cards. Or, you know, for even more value, you can pay the full cost and get the 2-2 flyer. Uh, Deadeye Navigator, pretty obvious for the blink ability, when you can pay 2 mana and just blink whichever creature is going to be beneficial for you. It's just fantastic. And Agent of Treachery. This one, again, is amazing. This is probably one of the best Enter the Battlefield abilities because it's just control a permanent of your opponent's. Um, and then the nice thing is, is again, if you have Yurok, it's going to be two permanents. And then you blink this guy one time. He doesn't give the permanents back when you blink him because it doesn't say until he leaves the battlefield. It's just gain control. So you blink this guy once, then suddenly you do have three permanents. And then every turn you get to draw three cards off of him. So that is just a absurd uh, card, especially in Yurok. Then we've got our black creatures in Opposition Agent, just to protect from opponent's tutoring. Ravenous Chupacabra for removal. Shriek Maw for removal with Evoke. And into the green. Pretty light on the black, obviously, and we're going to be heavy on the green in terms of creatures. <clears throat> Birds of Paradise to ramp into Yarok. You want to get him out as fast as possible. And again, even we're playing Elves of Deep Shadow to be a um, ghetto Birds of Paradise. Then we've got the Lotus Cobra. Again, since that's landfall, that's going to double trigger. So if you play a fetch land um, with that, you're going to get four mana because you're going to get one off the fetch, one off the land that it recovers, and then you're going to double that for four. Courser of Crufix. Eternal Witness. Again, nothing like getting a double E Witness, just total classic. Then... Um, Ramanop Excavator. This guy's just a Crucible of Worlds, lets you play those lands out of your graveyard to keep getting those landfall triggers. Rex Sage. Wood Elves. Oracle of Moldaya. And these are just going in CMC order, but we're still at four. Like I said, we love the love the green creatures in this deck. Uh, Timeless Witness, um, which um, will basically let you um, be an Eternal Witness and then Eternalize it so you can get two cards on cast and then two cards off the Eternalize. Uh, Acidic Slime. Soul of the Harvest. So this is a type of trigger, even though it's not about him entering the battlefield, and it says whenever another token, non-token creature enters the battlefield, draw a card. That does still double with Yarok because it's still an ability of a permanent you control triggering um, when another permanent enters the battlefield, so you do get two cards every time you play a creature with that. Avenger of Zendikar. Craterhoof Bohemoth. Bale for, Bale full Strix. Again, getting double card off of that is just great value. Hostage Taker. Can take an extra hostage. Uh, and again, Deathrite Shaman for more ramping into Yarok. So we got into the colorless, or excuse me, the, uh, Multicolor creatures here, obviously. I didn't say that, but we're in the middle of the multicolor creatures. Got the Coiling Oracle. Again, just more value. Risen Reef. Um, I haven't been pointing out the elementals, but he is an elemental. And Uro. 
Again, um, that's got the ETB trigger, whether you escape it or whether you cast it, so that's very nice. Tatiova, and again, that's just fantastic on the landfall. Gain a life, draw a card, and then if you get to double that, um, again, you play a, play a simple play like a fetch land, and suddenly you're gaining four life, drawing four cards. It's just absurd. Uh, C, Tyrant of Gyre Strait. Again, similar uh, effect to the Tachiova with the drawing card when you play a land, but also this one lets you play an extra land. Um, Nisa of Shadowed Bows. So this one is great, kind of a hidden gem because of the landfall trigger. So when you play a land, um, whenever you play a land, you actually get two loyalty counters on Nisa. And so then it makes it very easy to just keep dropping this ultimate, keep playing cards out of your graveyard over and over um, for that minus five because the landfall just fills up so quickly. Oko, Thief of Crowns, mostly for um, controlling your opponent's commanders or other problem permanents. Soul Ring, into the artifacts now, starting off with the ramp. Mana Crypt. Nice double masters foil um, borderless. Love the art on that. Then the Mox Diamond. My foil's in the Kalia, so you just get the original Mox Diamond here. And Chrome Mox. Again, nice uh, double masters there. Jeweled Lotus. Again, I'm generally a fan of Jeweled Lotus, but um, Yerok is fantastic with him because just... A Jeweled Lotus alone lets you get a turn two Yarok um, just by drawing this Jeweled Lotus because um, you know two two turns worth of mana you pay for two of the two of the colored cost and then this Jeweled Lotus will play for two colorless plus the final third color that you do need so a Jeweled Lotus is just a guaranteed turn two Yarok and again the quicker you get Yarok the quicker you start doubling stuff so I just love that especially in here and then the last ramp we play is the Arcane Signet. Moving on to our equipment, we've got the Lightning Greaves and the Sword of Feast and Famine. Nice uh, Kaladesh invention there. And also great for Yurik, another invention is the Cloudstone Curio. Lets you bounce one creature back to hand when you play a creature and really just um, keep generating that extra value. I love the art on this one. Crucible of Worlds. Same thing we said about ramming up Excavator, just playing extra lands from your grave. And um, obviously, too, didn't mention, but you can do the Strip Mine Wasteland combo and just keep um, battering down your opponent's lands, too. Panharmonicon. Uh, in it, this is probably the deck that Panharmonicon is going to be the best in. And it is uh, basically just a second Yarok for you. It only works with artifacts and creatures entering, but that's almost everything that you have. Um, and so it does uh, give you an extra trigger as well. Uh, Vidalkin Orary just lets us play at instant speed. Great Henge. Uh, this one is, again, kind of a hidden gem because of this ability down here. It says you get a plus one, plus one counter and draw a card when you play a creature. And with Yarok, that'll be doubled. Um, now into the enchantments. Of course, we've got our Ristic Study. Even with as much value as you're generating, can always have more card draw. Exploration. When you're drawing all those cards, make sure you can get your extra lands onto the table. Guardian Project. This is another one similar to the Great Henge. It lets you draw a card when you play a non-token creature. And obviously with Yerok, that's going to double and let you draw two cards. Here's another one of our nice masterpieces in the deck is the Survival of the Fittest Judge promo. And obviously... This is just fantastic because it just lets you repeatedly tutor for whatever creature you need at the moment. Sylvan Library. Into our instants and sorceries now. Of course, we have our Cyclonic Rift for board control. And then for protection, we have Fierce Guardianship. Got to protect your Yarok, and protecting him for free is very nice. And then Mana Drain. And our tutors, We've got Vampiric Tutor, Worldly Tutor, Crop Rotation, get that Cradle, 
Assassin's Trophy just for general permanent destruction, anything that's a problem permanent for you. Toxic Deluge for a board wipe. Into the Sorcery Speed Tutors, we've got Demonic Tutor. Um, again, I can't wait for them to do this, in, at least in a foil. Um, borderless would be even better, but um, it's fantastic art from the Divine vs. Demonic Dual Deck. It has been reprinted once or twice, but has not been ever um, put out in foil. And Green Sun Zenith. Again, just all those great green creatures. Get whichever one you need. And then for our final cards here, we've got our ramp package in Farseek, Nature's Lore, and Three Visits. Now, I love uh, all three of these cards because all of them um, refer to forest, forest, Plains Island, Swamp Mountain. The uh, point being is that you can get that Zagoth Triome, you can get those Ravnica Shocklands, you can get your Revised Duels, any of these. So these are always going to be my preferred ramp is the two CMC spells that let us get all of our all of our best lands, and then obviously the one CMC um, mana ramp creatures. So, so that's how we're going to get our Yarok out early. So thanks for watching, guys. I had a lot of fun sharing that with you. Obviously, this is my Yarok the desecrated deck as you can see great value just fantastic fun to play and generating so much value and then when the value you're generating is all the beautiful cards it makes the experience even better thanks for watching guys appreciate all the feedback look forward to more videos take care